Now make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and also be sure to click on the description and sign up for the email list. You know, there are videos that we try and post on YouTube that for whatever reason, they don't post them. You don't wanna miss them. So click the description and sign up for our email list. Immigration, we've talked a lot about how Fox has Bill Malugan on the border talking about immigration, about all these people entering the country to the point where you've got over 2 million illegal aliens who are in our interior that we know about. That does not include the so-called gotaways. This is critical because this is on ABC News, not Fox, not Breitbart, not Newsmax, not One America News Network, not the Larry Elder Show, ABC News. This morning, governors in Arizona and Texas sounding the alarm as border communities like Eagle Pass, Texas, are overwhelmed by the record number of migrants. Our camera is capturing several groups crossing the Rio Grande River with young children hoping to request asylum. Apprehensions are expected to hit over 2 million in just one year. So right now, it is an all-out effort by local, state, and federal agencies here on the border. If the numbers say at this rate, it will be the highest number of illegal crossings since at least 1960. Now, of course, Fox News had been reporting this for months, but ABC is just now getting around to it. Better late than ever. You see the woman in the helicopter. If this keeps going, we're going to have over 2 million people in the interior. Hello, it's been going on for months. You've ignored it because your guy is in the White House. Tom Homan, former acting ICE, here's what he said. And the Center for Immigration Studies gave a number yesterday, which is devastating. In 2020, last year under Trump, they have arrested 65,000. And these are people that are dangerous drugs, assault, sexual assault, robbery, homicide, kidnapping. They arrested 65,000 of them. Under Biden, they arrested 5,900. They're yeah. down 90 percent. So the arrest numbers are down 90 percent. You add to that that ICE released 14,000 criminals to the street last year because they were told to by DHS. And on top of all of this, the Office of Principal Legal Advisor, the legal arm of ICE, the, the attorneys that prosecute deportation cases, they have literally closed thousands upon thousands of cases. Just said, no, we're not going to deport them. We're going to end the cases. And, and they just stopped them. So this is far from true. ICE has been decapitated. Their numbers are atrocious. They've arrested less people than I've ever seen in the history of this agency. And all of this is benefiting the drug cartels, as Byron Donalds, Republican from Florida, tells us. What I think is, is that if you have Democrat politicians, not just Joe Biden, but people like Mark Kelly of Arizona, uh, Cortez Masto of Nevada, uh, Mayor Adams of New York, Mayor Bowser of Washington, D.C., if they support this kind of a policy at our border, then they should be responsible for the consequences. You have border towns all throughout the southern border who never asked for a wide open border. Joe Biden wanted to do it. Democrat politicians have supported it. So they need to be the ones to pay for it. It's just that simple. If you have border towns bear the burden while liberals in the Northeast get to ignore the problem that they created, you're only going to get more of a problem. What is happening is a politi political and humanitarian catastrophe. But this is brought to us by the Democrat Party. So these major blue cities, they should be the ones to have to deal with some of the burden being caused by their terrible border policy. And that's the point, isn't it? These border states have not asked for open borders. It's these liberals living in the North, living in New England, that have supported all of this. Okay, this is what you want. We're gonna put some of them on buses and put them in your towns and cities and see how you're gonna deal with this. You're just getting a small taste in Washington, D.C. and New York what border towns in Texas have been experiencing since Joe Biden has been president. And the Border Patrol discovered 10 adult migrants posing as unaccompanied minors. El Paso sector agent said, one example, three adults were discovered when they were attempting to use counterfeit documentation. The adults included two women and one man, all in their early 20s, part of a group of 13. They were posing as minors. The individuals whose sex were not given were 26, 25, and 18 years of age, and they entered as part of a group that the agents discovered their true agencies, their true ages after they found discrepancies between their stories and their documentation. Record illegal numbers again this year, 
and El Paso sector border patrol agents have detected more than 650 adult migrants posing as minors. Now, there were 10 House Republicans who voted to impeach Donald Trump. Of those 10, only two have survived their primaries to make it to the general election in November. Some decided not to run again, some were primaried and lost their elections, but of the 10 who voted to impeach Trump, only two have survived and might, might, might still be able to remain in the House. But first, do you, like I do, bring your my pillow to work? Never know when you might need to take a snooze. Never know when the power might go out and therefore, you know, out here in California we have these rolling brownouts because of the energy problems. So you never know when you might have to be able to take a snooze. That's why I bring my my pillow to work and you should too. See the number on your screen. Call it or go to mypillow.com. Be sure and use promo code elder. And by the way, don't think all they have are pillows. Au contraire, mon frere. They have over 100 products. Go to mypillow.com, use promo code ELDER, and check them out. They've got sheets. Yes, Giza Dream bed sheets. I kid you not. In various colors. They got towels. Oh, yes, various colors. Soft yet absorbent. They actually work. So many of our towels look great, feel great in the stores. You get them, and they don't do what they're supposed to do, i.e. absorb. These absorb. And did I mention the my pillow, my slippers? I have a pair on, I don't have them on right now, but if I take a snooze at work, I'll probably put those on. But I don't take snoozes at work because someone might be watching. MyPillow.com, promo code ELDER. Hit the number on your screen. Did I mention MyPillow.com, promo code ELDER? We'll be right back. CNN says no one is safe or secure right now. And the new CEO of CNN, as we said earlier, had a little meeting, and he said that, I want to acknowledge that this is a time of significant change. And I know many of you are unsettled. There will be more changes, and you might not understand or like it. One staffer says, no one is safe or secure right now. And that's because their ratings have been in the toilet. Steltzer's show, the one that got fired, the media guy, struggled in its rival, against its rival show on Fox called Media Buzz. Media Buzz averaged 1.5 million viewers this year, while Steltzer's show averaged almost half that. And his show, which is called Reliable Sources, had its lowest rated year since 2015. It's lost 26% of his total audience versus last year. That is why the man got canned. Let's turn to academia. Polls show college students refuse to dorm with those of opposite political beliefs. You know, the open-minded, tolerant people that would not have a roommate if that roommate had a different point of view. According to NBC, Almost half of second-year college students say they wouldn't choose to be roommates with somebody who supported a different candidate for president than they did in 2020. Majority say they wouldn't go out a date with somebody who voted differently. And two-thirds say they couldn't see themselves marrying someone who backed a different candidate two years ago. 73% of Democrats polled from a class of 2025 said Biden should not run again. 27% said he should run. 57%, by the way, of Republican voters polled said they thought former Trump should, in fact, run again. Again, it shows you the intolerance of people on the left. I've seen studies that show Dartmouth students, majority of those who self-described as liberal, would not have a conservative roommate if you paid them. However, those who describe themselves as conservatives wouldn't mind having a liberal roommate, probably feel that there might be some very interesting, healthy exchange of ideas. But the Democrats don't seem to feel the same way. Now, move over George Soros. An elderly, ultra-secretive Chicago businessman, according to ProPublica, has given the largest known donation 
to a political group in history worth $1.6 billion. And the recipient is a conservative. The, the donor is a 90-year-old manufacturing magnate, and he gave the money to a nonprofit run by a man named Leonard Leo, who co-chairs the conservative group called the Federalist Society. This donation was first reported by the New York Times, and it gives the, Mr. Leo a great deal of power in order to advance conservative candidates and conservative causes. So now, on the conservative side, there is a counterpart to George Soros, $1.6 billion. The Energy Secretary says that the new climate change plan is perhaps the biggest peace plan ever. Secretary of Energy explains. Honestly, this invasion by Russia is, uh, an, uh, is such an example of why countries need to move away from the volatility of fuels from countries who do not have our interests. Now, notice she's not going to say, we ought to go back to producing our own oil and gas. We ought to go back to being energy independent the way we were under President you-know-who. She doesn't say that. This is all about climate change. And from the volatility of fossil fuels. If we want to be energy secure and energy independent. From the volatility of fossil fuels. So you're supporting Keystone Pipeline. You're supporting drilling in Anwar. You're supporting drilling on federal property. You're supporting drilling offshore. Right? Wrong. That means we've got to produce our own energy. My uh, counterpart at, in Ireland, the minister there, energy minister there, has said that no one has ever weaponized access to the sun. Oh, so when you say we ought to be producing our own energy, you mean as long as it's solar power and wind. You don't mean oil and gas and fracking and natural gas and nuclear. You don't mean that, right? No one has ever weaponized the wind. Perhaps a move to clean energy will be the greatest peace plan the world has ever known. The move to green energy will be the greatest peace plan the world has ever known. Never mind all the solar, pan solar panels that are produced by China. Never mind the unreliability of wind and solar. Never mind all of the oil and gas we have on our own soil that could be produced to make us independent, as she said. No, no, she's all talking about independence, provided we rely on so-called renewables green. And never mind, all these EVs have to be powered and produced by oil and gas. And never mind, when Joe Biden was asked, do you own an electric vehicle? He wouldn't answer the question. Now hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you click on the description. So that way you'll be put on our email list because YouTube, for some reason, won't post a lot of our videos. Do not be excluded from our great videos. Also, you can also call the show, 888-971-7243. That's 888-971-SAGE. Leave a message, make sure it's under 59 seconds, and be sure to avoid profanity. Hope you enjoyed that video. The full show is available to watch right now on Epoch TV. Just click the link in the description below to learn more because we've got a country to save.